In today's video, we're going to talk about dependency injection, what dependency injection is, what the dependency inversion principle is, what the IOC container is, what is inversion of control in general. By the end of this video, not only will you have a deep understanding of dependency injection, but you'll also know how it works behind the scenes, what are the underlying principles, and how you can work with it in your applications. My name is Amichai, and in this channel, I talk about software, architecture, design patterns, C-sharp, .NET, various other developer tools, and just things that you need to know if you're a software developer and you want to step up your game. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Okay, so let's jump right in. Let's start with an example and we'll work our way back to the theory when we look at the examples. So let's say that we're an application where at some point in time, we need to know how many stars a specific GitHub repository has. So let's go ahead and say stars. And let's say that to fetch these stars, we're getting it from some GitHub service. So as over here, we have some GitHub service, which has a single method called get stars, which receives over here the repo name. Let's say the repo is called throw. So let's go ahead and generate this class, generate this method, and let's simplify some things over here. So let's say public, this returns an int, and over here we have the repo name. Okay, now, like in most applications, this service won't actually have the implementation details of how to go ahead and call the GitHub API, but that will sit in some GitHub client. So let's say over here, we're simply returning what comes back from the GitHub client when we go ahead and say get repo, pass it the repo name, and then we can go ahead and access the number of stars specifically for this repository. So similarly, let's go ahead and create this class, create this method. Let's simplify some things over here. Let's say public, and let's say that this returns a tuple of let's say the repo name and also the number of stars. Then for the implementation, we don't really care about this. Let's say that we have over here the repo name and for the number of stars, let's simply say it's the length of the repository name. Okay, so what we currently have is the following. We have the GitHub service that to go ahead and fetch the number of stars based on the repo name goes ahead and uses some GitHub client which implements going to the GitHub API and fetching the repository details. So this entire thing is our application. Over here, we have actually GitHub. So the GitHub client is responsible to go to the GitHub API, fetch the repo, which has inside, let's say the repo name and the number of stars and all the other details, return this repo back to the GitHub service. And finally, the GitHub service takes the number of stars and returns it to the caller. Now, the underlying pattern that we have over here is very common in backend applications where you have some larger service or component using some client to go ahead and interact with an external dependency. But actually this pattern is way more common because if you generalize it, then what we have over here, we have some large component that uses some smaller component where the smaller component encapsulates, let's say calling some API, calling a database, or a specific computation that's encapsulated inside this smaller component. And the large component doesn't care about that. It's encapsulated in the smaller component and the large component simply uses the smaller component to get the result that it cares about. In our case, it's the repository. So you definitely know what I'm talking about. You have this pattern in your application probably all over the place. So just take one of the examples in your application, your service, and just imagine that throughout today's video because this example is very specific, but the underlying idea is extremely common. So let's talk about some design principles and refactor our code to follow these principles. So the first principle I wanna talk about is the dependency inversion principle. The dependency inversion principle says that higher level components or modules shouldn't depend on lower level components or modules, but instead they should rely on abstractions. So over here, we're not depending on some abstraction, but we're depending on the concrete instance of the GitHub client. Okay, and the motivation for this is that with the current implementation, what we have is the larger module is dependent on the smaller module. And when you have more and more smaller modules, you have the larger component with many dependencies and it's coupled directly with all the various implementations of the smaller components. So in our example, we don't want to have over here a reference to the actual implementation. We don't want to depend on that. Instead, we want to depend on some abstraction. For example, some iGitHub client. This iGitHub client interface will have the method get repo. That way we're abstracting away the underlying implementation. And theoretically we can have there an API call, working with web sockets, whatever we want. It's hidden behind this abstract component, which knows how to return the GitHub repository. Now this is similar to many other design patterns where you're trying to achieve decoupling between two components. So now you're no longer relying directly on the implementation, but you can go ahead and swap the GitHub client from one implementation to another implementation, or for testing specifically, you can go ahead and swap out the implementation. You can do it in different environments. 
it frees the GitHub service from relying on a specific implementation. So again, the dependency inversion principle, what we want to have over here is instead of this, we want to have some GitHub client where this GitHub client, let's say we have over here some private I GitHub client, and this interface exists like this, and it has the method get repo, which looks like this. And our GitHub client is one of the implementations of this interface. Okay, so that's the dependency inversion principle, also known as DIP. Now let's talk about what inversion of control is, also known as IOC. What is the IOC container? What is dependency injection, also known as DI? What's the difference between DIP, IOC, and DI? And how we can take those principles and everything and apply it to the example that we're looking at up until now. Now, real quick, before we continue, I want to remind you that I have three comprehensive courses on Dome Train. Two of them are a zero to hero in clean architecture, which comprise, in my opinion, the most comprehensive course for building production ready applications following clean architecture, including tests, authorization, everything you need to know when you're building production applications. And also another course on domain driven design, which also I don't think there's another comprehensive course like this course that teaches you everything you need to know to get started with domain driven design. So all the various terminology, various concepts, core concepts and principles that you need to know when you're working with domain driven design. So if you enjoy these videos, you want to expand your knowledge on clean architecture and domain driven design, and you want to see more of this on your screen, then make sure to check out the link in the description. Now back to the video. Okay, so let's start with inversion of control. So inversion of control is a design principle in which you give some of the control of your system. It can be the object, it can be portions of your program. You give the responsibility, the control to some container or a framework. So going back to our example, we have over here the GitHub service and the GitHub client. In procedural programming or just traditional programming, we're responsible for writing all the code, right? And it goes step by step. So we go ahead and we create the GitHub service. Sometime before we call the get stars method, we need to somewhere instantiate the GitHub client and everything. We need to control the entire process. Inversion of control is giving some of the responsibility to a framework or a container. Let's say you're using ASP.NET, you're giving some of the control of the application to the framework. You're not responsible for creating the controller when a request arrives. You're not responsible for many of the things that the framework is responsible for. So in version of control, all it is, is giving some control over your application, over some objects or portions of your program to a framework or a container. Dependency injection is specifically, how do we go ahead and we inject the concrete implementation of this interface to the GitHub service? Again, all dependency injection is, is how do we go ahead and set this field over here? So you have some field, you have some property, you have some dependency, how do you go ahead and set it? Now, dependency injection is a pattern to implement inversion of control. So using some framework or some underlying hidden code, you're going ahead and setting the underlying dependencies without having to explicitly go ahead and set everything yourself. Okay, now let's expand a bit more on dependency injection. So we have this field over here and we want to go ahead and inject the actual implementation, the concrete object, to this field. There are three types of dependency injection. The first one is constructor injection, which is you simply get, when instantiating the class, you get over here the concrete implementation for this interface, and then you go ahead and set it up during the instantiation of the object, and then you have to set it, and during runtime, then you know everything works as expected. So again, type one is constructor injection. Okay, so this is the first type. The next type is setter injection, where you instead of initializing it during instantiation of the object, instead you have some setter method. So you have over here something like set GitHub client that receives over here the interface as a parameter, and then it goes ahead and it sets the GitHub client to be the GitHub client like so. The third type is called interface injection, where you basically have some interface, let's say it's called I GitHub client setter, and this interface has this method like so, where the key point in interface injection is that the GitHub service implements some interface. Over here, it's the GitHub client setter, which allows to inject the implementation of the GitHub client. So as you can see, this is pretty simple. In the end, what it allows you to do is to inject the implementation 
of the dependency, which is the GitHub client. Now in the .NET world, everyone uses constructor injection. So that's why you'll see in many applications, the following pattern where it's basically the first thing that we showed. So we have over here, the GitHub client and we initialize it like so. Now, instead of us managing all the dependencies, so for example, going over here and saying that the GitHub client is a new GitHub client and then passing it over here, instead of us having to manage all the dependency injection in our entire application, what you'll often see is that we won't manage it ourselves, but instead we'll give the responsibility to some IOC container. If you're using .NET, then you'll likely use the following dependency injection IOC container, which is called Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. So what we have now is the service collection. So we can go ahead and say over here, service collection, and then we can go ahead and register in the dependency injection IOC container, what implementation we want for which interface. So we can go ahead and say add transient and we'll talk about what transient means in a minute. For now, just imagine that we're adding some mapping in which we're saying that for the I GitHub client interface, we want to have the implementation be the GitHub client class. Also alongside this, let's say that we want to add the GitHub service as well to the dependency injection IOC container. Now we can go ahead and say service collection dot build service provider. Now we have a new object called service provider. And the beauty is that now this object controls the creation of the objects and the dependency injection. So what we can do is the following, we can go ahead and say, instead of everything that we have over here, we can simply go ahead and say var github service. And we can say that this is a service provider, get required service, specify that the service that we want is the github service. And this will go ahead and create a new GitHub service object, which internally already has this set to be the GitHub client. Which GitHub client? This depends on what we defined for the mapping between the interface and the actual object. So now all we need to do is go ahead and say GitHub service dot get stars, specify the package that we want, dump this to the screen. And if we go ahead and say throw has this many stars and we go ahead and run this, then you can see that indeed we use the implementation of the GitHub client as we wired it up in the dependency injection IOC container. Now, just a word on the transient part, because there's an entire in-depth video coming on this transient basically says every single time someone needs an I GitHub client interface, go ahead and create a new instance of a GitHub client and use that. Meaning that over here, we're asking for a new GitHub service. When we're asking for a new GitHub service, the service provider goes ahead and creates a brand new GitHub service. Why? Because we specified that we want it to be transient. When it goes ahead and creates the GitHub service, then it also needs to go ahead and create the GitHub client because it's one of our dependencies. Because we defined it as transient as well, then it'll go ahead and create a new GitHub client and use that. I'll leave it there for now because there's going to be an in-depth video specifically on dependency injection and the various options that we can do in ASP.NET. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. I'm reminding you again that I have three comprehensive courses on Dome Train where I go in depth into clean architecture and domain driven design. So if those are topics that interest you, then make sure to check out the courses. Don't forget to like the video, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.